So today I'm going to show you how to make a spoon ring using tools that you can find at home or if you're going to be making more than one ring, I'll show you some tools to invest in to make it easier and quicker and nicer. So yeah. Is that stone going on the spoon ring? <laughs> yep. So shiny. intro. So this video is brought to you by uh, privacy.com. Privacy lets you buy things online using a virtual card, meaning that it masks and protects all your personal information, your card number, all that jazz. You can go to privacy.com backslash schmood to automatically receive five dollars, that's six, towards your first purchase. So I found these spoons at a thrift store. I shine one up just to see and make sure that it would shine up nice. When picking out spoons, I like to find one that is silver plated. It'd be cool if it was full silver, also still would work. Oh, would work, I thought we were working with metal. <laughs> All right, so I measured out just roughly how big I wanted it on my finger. Took some skizzers and tried to cut it. Thought this would cut right through. Didn't really work, ended up bending it and it broke right where I had the little score marks from the scissors, so that worked. Next, to round it. To bend it, I just use these pliers, but there. they have teeth on them, and so it'd like leave marks on your rings. Wow, so strong. So I just took some cloth, and I balled it up, rolled it up, and we're gonna put it on top of the pliers, and then wrap it up with electrical tape, and that should make it so that when you're you're prying it, you're bending it, and pressing that up against the, the spoon, it won't leave little marks, in theory. Let's test it out. Here I am acting like I don't know the result, when I already did this, this is a voiceover. But anyway, so I bent it around, and I had to get a rag because I had slippy hands from Charlie's Chicken. Wow, wash your hands. I got nice and bent, but I still had the burrs and the rough edge from cutting it. To fix that, I just took a fingernail file, filed it nice and round, and bent it again. And there's still a lot of space, but now I need to decide if I want that little part to go under or on top of the end of the spoon. And I decided to go under for now. And it's looking pretty round, but to get it even more round, what we're going to do is take this hammer and again, we're going to put cloth over the top of it and use that electrical tape to kind of protect the ring from getting too marred up. And yeah, that's hard. That's a hammer. And then I take this little bolt. Is that a bolt? But something round. You're just going to want something around that you can pound that into a circle. So I pounded it onto it first. I threw that rag down to protect it as I hammered it against the metal and the table. Just did that enough till it was nice and round. I don't know, I feel like I need to roll my R's every time, but I do. So, just working with it, kind of shined it up a little bit. But then I took like a green scrubby, like you'd use to wash dishes, and kind of just buffed some of the gunk out of the top and the inside. You can also use it on the side of the ring to make it nice and smooth. And it left some scratches, but hopefully we can get that out with some uh, toothpaste. So with that, I just smooshed it on there and rubbed it around and kind of buffed it with my little scrubbies on the end of my fingers. Fingerprints, like pads, scrubs. The idea is that like the little grit in toothpaste will buff out any of the other scratches and make it shiny. So I got the toothpaste off and the red fuzz off and it looked pretty good. I mean, you could still see a little bit of the scratches from the green uh, scrubby thing. So if I were to do again, I think I would just use the toothpaste. So you could use stuff from home, or you could buy this little drill master drill rotary master. tool for $9. And it's gonna make your life so much easier. It comes with a bunch of different attachments, and like if you do need to buy other attachments, they're like maybe $2. But I had one to cut the spoon in half, another one to grind it down, and all you have to do to change them out is pull it and push one in. This is like a little scotch bright one, kind of like the green pad. Uh, use that just like the other one to take it off. I did it really lightly because I didn't want to have very many scratches. Kind of like on that first one, it was more gentle. Be gentle with me, please. And yeah, looks good. Then there's this buffer one and it comes with this white stuff. I can't remember what it's called. I call it white rouge because I'm gonna later use one called black rouge, but who knows? And just use that to buff it up and it's gonna make a world of difference. It's already so shiny. Look at that. Wow. 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 Uh, so I feel like that shined up real nice. So nice. 
I wanted to try it out on a different spoon without using the scotch Brite thing. But also I kind of just really liked this time lapse of it going from dull to shiny. Nice. Yeah, that shined up real nice. I, I, I can't stop. I just, I need to shine everything now. You just see me like at my house just shining all my spoons. They're already shiny, but I just can't stop shining things and I have an addiction. So I hit this one with the scotch Brite thing to see if we could go through the silver plate and you can see that I did. So you gotta be careful when using those tools. And there's the difference between the one from home and the one used with that little drill master drill guy. Master. Next, I'm gonna use some professional tools. But first, I wow. play a little something. So, as a creator, you're constantly buying things online. As a human being, you're constantly buying things online. Last thing you're gonna want is someone to get a hold of all your private information into your credit card and then go on a shopping spree for like a ton of ring making equipment. Cause it's kind of expensive, as you're gonna see later. Um, which brings us to today's sponsor, Privacy. Privacy is a tool, it's a website where they give you virtual numbers bloop, in place of your actual credit card numbers. They like say something gets hacked or something goes awry, your, your original credit card numbers are safe. For anyone in a creative space, I recommend you put as much attention into protecting your privacy online as you would your craft. So when could this be used? I mean, I was just thinking about how many times I've actually said my credit card over the phone. And for some reason, every time I do that, I feel a little sketchy. So this is one way that you could do it. You can set up your card, your virtual card, to be used only once, or it also can be set up for multiple payments that you set up, like, oh, I only want this card to be valid for three months, which is great for subscription products. I would personally use it for like free subscription products, like where you have to put in a credit card and you only want to be billed for that one month and not anymore. And to set up your virtual card, it's super easy. First, what you're gonna do is go to privacy.com backslash mood to get an additional $5 added onto your credit when you sign up. You're gonna link your virtual cards to the US checking account or debit card. Then you set a limit to the virtual card. You can then use that card on any online store. So like I was saying, you're gonna get $5 towards that first purchase. I was talking about getting that little Dremel tool for $9. That's 10 because I did the math, which means minus five, that's a $4 tool. So go ahead, go to privacy.com backslash schmood, set up a card, go use that $5 to make something rad. Okay, cool, let's go. So I took a new spoon and I just measured out with that last spoon how long to make it. And then you can take like this little saw, but the whole purpose of using professional tools is to make it easier, more efficient, and quicker. So honestly, like this $3 garden little snipper works. Wow, so good. Yeah. So I mean, it still leaves like little burrs and scra scragglies. I don't know what I was gonna call this, but we'll grind that off anyways. This tool is one I'd invest in for sure. If you're gonna be bending more than like one ring, honestly, it saves your life. So it comes with a bunch of different sizes and pieces. This piece on the right is usually made out of plastic, protect your rings from being marred, but I lost mine, so I just added some leather on there. So all you do is you stick your little ring or whatever in there and you crank that down, well, crank it, and it will just like start bending your ring. Cool, cool, cool. Ooh, I forgot to deburr that end. So I'm just using my muscles to pry that apart. Wow, so strong. And we're gonna grind that off. So this little rotary tool, the professional one looks kind of like this. It's like a flex shaft. It goes all the way to this motor. And there's a foot pedal to control the speed. But honestly, I've found the most quick and efficient way is to use one of these bench grinders. I feel like you can get more done in a shorter amount of time. And then also it's not as strenuous on your wrist you're just holding on to the ring. And there you go, looks good. So back to rounding this out. I probably could have used like a bigger little bolt there where it says 12, but I found it's easier to go smaller and then take this mandrel and hammer and just pound it round. So slide that ring onto your mandrel. Ooh, yeah. And begin just pounding her out. And you rotate the mandrel and just hit the ring until it's round. Still needs some work. So I took it back to this one. Hit all those spots where it's like kind of flat. And again, I made it tighter, like a tighter circle than I wanted. And then just pounded it until it was nice and round. It's round. Yeah, I'm good with that. So to shine it up, I use this buffer. This right side is like the Scotch Bright material, and this left side is the buffer. And I'm not gonna use that Scotch Bright stuff, we're just gonna use the buffer. Put a piece of paper towel down because it gets pretty messy. Take this black rouge and I prime it up. And that's just like kind of this gritty stuff that makes it real nice and shiny. You can I see that it's shining up real good there, Clark. So just shine it up, make sure I get the whole entire ring. And you're done. 
So here's an after shot of all three of those. You can really see the difference between like the first and the last one. The second and last one is a little harder to see, but it is so shiny. It's like a mirror finish. So I really like that black rouge. Here's some other little shots of them. Wow, who's who's filming this? My dad at my piano recital? Oh, there we go. I actually just stabilized this afterwards. It was real shaky. I like how this macro lens is showing like all the imperfections. Because personally, I like those. I feel like it gives it character. So the last thing I did is I bought some gems. Some of these were like more than $100 a piece. So that's cool. And I thought it would be cool to place it on top and solder it to the ring. So first thing I gotta do is I gotta take this little bezel and solder that, and then I'll place the stone. So to do that, I have these little second hands, and I put on some flux. This is what's gonna help the metal solder, solder the metal to metal, put the bezel down, and just heat her up. Just heat her up. And I'm just using a cooking torch to do that. So then I place the solder in there, beep, boop, boop, and just start melting that away. I feel like I melted it okay, but then I left the heat on it for too long afterwards, or something went wrong, because, huh? Oh, you'll see. Once I was fiddling around with it to see if it like was good, I just, it just fell right off. Cool, 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 cool. So, let's try that again. Another thing that could be wrong is like, your finger has grease on it, so I took the screen scrubby to get the residue off and also the grease. I watered down the flux to make it more of a thin layer, and then I heated it up, added the solder, and this time I didn't keep the heat on it too long after it melted. Not long at all, actually. And voila, looks pretty, pretty good. Honestly, pretty rough for a first time, but I added the stone off camera, and this is kind of like my artist proof, so I'll probably price it a little more on my website. So then I soldered the bezel on those other two rings, and it looked a lot better. And I'm gonna use that macro lens to show you how I place the gem. So I have that little ruby. First thing I did is I put it in to make sure it fit and it was pretty good. So I took it out and what I'm gonna do is take that rotary tool and grind it out some of the inside where the, the solder kind of spilled up. So with that I added some glue. Ugh. Spilled some glue, try to clean it up with those nasty fingers. Wow, wash your hands. And then just placed that ruby inside, smushed it down, and then I just took pliers to smush the bezel up against it. Honestly, pretty stoked on how it turned out. So now I have all these extra half spoons. So what we're gonna do is just cut off the actual spoon part and use the rest of this handle to make a cute little ring. Oh wow, cool transition. What are you, you TikTok star? Or you actually, I actually do have a TikTok, so if you guys want to follow me, that's fine, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I really like on these rings where it says that it's the New England silver plated. I'm also releasing these golden hand rings, just a limited run of these guys on the site. So if you want one of these, you can pick them up. Pretty stoked with how they turned out. They were pain in my butt, so I'll never be making them again. But those are there, and then also these spoon rings. Really stoked on how they turned out. So if you want to make your own, cool. Or if you don't want to make your own, but you still want, you can go snag them from my site. So, cool. Alright, so be sure to like and subscribe. Go ahead and hit that bell notification. And yeah, thanks so much for watching and thanks so much for our patrons.